Welcome back. I just want to give a loud shout out to Liberty, our sponsors, without whom this would not be possible. I want to remind you about our Tenfold Education application, which you can download. And you can watch us on YouTube at Mindset Learn. So let's go on with the business sectors and their environments. Now, this is a section, though, I know it doesn't count a lot of marks, but it, these are actually marks for free. For you've been studying this content since grade, grade 10. You studied it in grade 11 and you're studying it in grade 12. So actually, by now, this should be common sense to you. All right, so the sectors is, is very easy. You have your primary, your primary, your secondary and your tertiary. Your primary is your raw materials. So, for example, that's your your fisheries and we are your forestry. We are chopping off of trees. Yes. Your secondary, this is where your factory. So this is where the tree gets turned into a chair. Your tertiary is, is retail, especially. This is where your chair gets sold in a shop. Then, additional to that, they might ask you to identify the sector from a scenario and then add it with your environments. Okay, so your environments, there are only three. It is your micro, your, your ma market and your macro. Now, I want to show you this, this little graph that I use. So inside, this is your micro. Just outside of it is your market. And just outside of that is your macro. Now these are environments. You need to be very, very confident with the meaning, the difference between sectors and environments. So the way that they ask this is they, they're going to give you some problem, some challenge. All right. They're going to say, um, and I'm going to use examples for it's far, far easier explaining this. So the, the problem is um, your financial director has committed fraud. Now, you as the boss, you need to ask yourself, do you have the control to sort out this, this employee that has done something wrong? Do you have that control? If you, the boss of that business, have the control, then this is a micro environment. If you do not, if it is a different kind of problem, then it is in a different environment. So let's, get, let's look at a different example. We have, um, you are a farmer and your, your grain store burned down. If it was only your grain store that your own grain store that burned down, it would be your problem. The, so it's micro environment. But now let's use this example of bird flu that's going around at the moment. And now suddenly eggs is very, very expensive. Now is bird flu only your problem? Only you as a chicken and egg farmer, is it only your problem? And is it something that only you can fix? No, it's not. It's affecting your neighbor as well. And every other farmer that is within that industry that is farming with birds. So no, it is not just your problem and you cannot solve it on your own. It is a market problem. Because it's more than one person that one more than one business is going to have to destroy all those eggs. And unfortunately, all those birds to get a grip on bird flu. All right, now let's look at another, another example. So inflation rate, okay. the inflation rate has now gone up and everything is now more expensive, including uh, the raw material that you use to bake your bread and now your prices has to go up. But the inflation rate going up, is that only your business's problem or is it is it all businesses in your industry's problem or is it everybody in the entire country that will be facing this problem? In this case, it's everybody's problem. You do not, do you have some control over it? No. Do you have 
Do you have all the control with the inflation rate? No, you don't. Do you have, um, do you have no control? Yes, you have no control. If you have no control, you know that it's in the macro environment. So I hope that's cleared, cleared that up for you. It's easy marks. They'll probably give you this in a scenario. Uh, typically, they give you the challenge. They ask you to identify what kind of problem this is, and then they, they link it with control. And sometimes they might even be, be a little bit, they might actually include the sectors as well. Let's go on. Now we're busy with the second, sec second topic of the paper, business operations. And I want you to be mindful of a few things here. We have, it just consists of human resources and quality of performance. Question three is both 20 marks. Question four is both 10 marks. And question six has it will be asked as an essay. So you need to know human resources and quality of performances, performance very well. Human resources. Now here are some popular questions which keep on appearing every year. In the academic fields, we, ref we refer to them as low-hanging fruits, meaning easy marks. They appear so often that uh, it's actually surprising if they're not there. So, the first one is job analysis. They love this question. They're going to ask you, what is the meaning of a job analysis? And all you need to do is you need to tell me that a job analysis consists of a job description and a job specification, elaborating perhaps a little bit on what a job description and a job specification is. Remember, the description is where they're literally describing the duties of the job. What will you be doing? Where the specifications is about what qualities are you looking for in the person? What uh, qualifications especially? If that's the most basic way to explain it. Another easy mark is sources of internal recruitment and its friend, actually, external recruitment. recruitment. It's always one or the other. And it's very basic. This is where they're asking you, okay, how do you handle internal recruitment? The HR person puts a notice on the notice board or they send out an internal email asking people to apply for the position or they headhunt someone who's already employed within the company, especially in your big companies like Standard Bank or Liberty. If they see someone with potential that could possibly be a leader in a different department, yes, they, will, they could actually headhunt that person. Procedures, you are, oh, they love the recruitment procedure, the select, selection placement procedures. Each of these, they'll ask you to outline and possibly explain. If they ask you outline, it's just steps that you're listing down. If they ask you to explain, you are listing down the steps, but you are giving me at least one sentence explaining exactly what is meant underneath them. The other very popular question is either roles of the interviewee or the interviewer. Now the interviewee, that is the person that's wanting the job and the interviewer is the one that is in charge of the interview. Now I specifically use the word in charge because he does not necessarily set the questions that's being asked. The panel who he is introducing the interviewee to is asking the question. They are determining whether or not that person will be getting the job or not. So you need to realize that the interviewer is introducing them to the panel. And that's something that people get confused with often. Induction, the purpose, the benefits, and what should include it in that process is very popular as well. 
And remember, the purpose of induction is mainly to get, get the employee who has been recently appointed familiar with his environment, with what's his duties, with um, introducing perhaps to the, the culture of the company, what's the dress code, uh, maybe on Fridays they have a casual day where they wear jeans and tackies. All right, your employment contract, what to include in it and the legal link, especially to the basic conditions of employment acts. The basic conditions of employment act tells you what rights do you as employee have and what rights does the employer have and they love asking that as well by the way so what to include typically th leave clauses need to be mentioned um, salary how much will you pay um, is this a permanent contract are you a contract worker how will you be paid um, what does your duties entail in rough? Sometimes your contracts are even so elaborate that it actually even includes the entire job description. The other popular question is salary de determination methods. Now really there are only two. It's piecemeal and time related. Time related is the easiest one. This is your salary or your wage, your weekly wage, um, or your, um, or your even your daily, you, you know, if you pay your gardener that you pay X amount per day, their pay is linked to the amount of time that they are working. So it's time related. The other one is piecemeal. There you get paid by, based on the amount of products that you deliver based on, it's, it's very popular in factories, for example, where, uh, let's take a match factory, for example, how many boxes of matches did you produce or count or check today? And that will then determine how much pay you get. Fringe benefits, they always ask this, and everybody is forever getting this wrong. Fringe benef benefits has got absolutely nothing to do, do with facial features. I have had very interesting answers here. Fringe benefits is things such as medical aid, things like a car allowance. Um, in the government, you even have a, a, a living allowance. Uh, they, they give that to you. Uh, they contribute to your living arrangement. Uh, if you work overseas, it's included living expenses. They'll actually add that to your salary. They'll let you live in the hostel or whatever environment, especially if you're in, in the teaching environment. So you need to be able to give examples and then you need to discuss the impacts of it. Now remember, impact is what? Advantages and disadvantages. If that is the only takeaway that you take away from this today is that impact means that then you then I have achieved my objective for that so many people make this mistake and just don't realize what the word means the implication of the acts on HR now we are specifically referring to the labor relations act the basic conditions of employment act the Employment Equity Act and the Skills Development Act. Now, Labor Relations Act, this is managing the relationship or helping to manage the relationship between the employer and the employee. Um, it's also where your unions come into play and CCMA comes into play there. And additional to that, is you can also go to the Labour Court and appeal a case. So that's, if you think of the Labour Relations Act, that is what you be, should be thinking. Your basic conditions of Employment Act is what rights do I have as an employer have? And what rights does my employee have? And let's, let's try and consider each other's rights so that we don't end up at the CCMA. Empo employment equity, I want you to be very wary here. Do not confuse Employment Equity Act with your basic, uh, with your B, 
triple B E E acts. Do not confuse it. Your E E A is not only about about black discrimination, about race discrimination. It's also about discrimination against women. It's also about discrimination against uh, the disabled. It's also um, now this whole gender, gender and sexuality and identifying the LGBTQ discrimination factors. It's, it's also all of that facts. So it's not only about affirmative action. And then your SDA is your Skills Development Act. That's where the government is trying to force companies to, to spend on the development of employees. All right, quality performance is our last topic that we will be looking at. What is low-hanging fruit is the meaning or the difference between quality control, quality assurance, quality management and quality performance. Very popular questions are explain and identify. Obviously, if they're going to ask you to identify, they're, giving you, they're going to give you a scenario and you need to identify which is which. And then they'll ask you to explain it, so you need to be able to define it. And then they might ask you, what is the difference between between quality control and quality assurance or quality management and quality man, uh, performance. They, are, they might ask you questions like that. So you need to know these definitions very well. Benefits of a good quality management system. They love that question. And what should each business function do to produce a quality product service, also known as quality indicators? Now, it shocks me that some matriculants are in matric and they are unable to, for some reason, tell me what a business function is. Sure, so business function, it's your admin department, it's your finance department, it is your uh, general management, It is also your HR, your marketing, production, PR, public relations, and also purchasing. All of those you need to be able to link with quality. Bear that in mind. Let's move along. The meaning of TQM, Total Quality Management, versus the meaning of quality. Be clear about that. Also be able to identify TQM elements. Focus on the impact, impacts, all right, impact, advantages, disadvantages of TQM elements on large businesses only, all right? That's a very helpful tip, only on large, for large businesses. The other focus should be on the PDCA model, the application of the model and the meaning of the model as part of a continuous improvement to processes and system. Now, if you blanked a little on this PDCA, we're referring to plan, do, check, and act. It's that model. The role of quality circles is another popular question. And the disadvantages if TQM is poorly implemented. Only the disadvantages is important in that section. How should a business implement TQM in order to reduce the cost of quality is the other important question. To recap, paper one consists of two major topics, which is your business environments and your business operations. 
Under your business environment, we have three major topics. One is legislation. One is business strategies. Uh, business strategies. And the other is business sectors, which we have looked at quite elaborate, elaboratively. Business sectors and environments, which I'm now not going to write. So your legislation, I've told you, is eight acts. It's your Skills Development Act, your Labor Relations Act, your Employment Equity Act, your Basic Conditions of Employment, Employment, ooh, I made a little mistake there. And back to my pen. Employment Act, basic conditions of employment. It's COIDA. It's your Triple B Broad Based Black Economic Employment Act. It is your National Credit Act, as well as your Consumer Protection Act. Here be especially mindful with your NCA of your consumer rights and don't confuse it with the Consumer Protection Act. Under your business strategies, we have we discussed the, the strategic management process, and I told you that we're being you are we are specifically looking at industrial tools. Tools. And additional to that, we are looking at strategies. And we are looking at evaluating those strategies. So your industrial tools, it's very easy. It's your SWOT analysis. It is your pistol. And it is your porters five forces. Okay, porters. Your strategies is a little bit, this is your integration, integration is one of them, intensive, additional to that we've got diversification strategies, and defensive strategies and they each have three little bits added to them like horizontal vertical conglomerates they have three types within them and two of them you need to know the advantages as well all right so that is business environments now Business operations is the other part that we were looking at, which is the shorter section. All right, so business in business operations. All right, you have your human resources and then you've got your quality of performance. With your human resources, we specifically looked at uh, the legal link, all right, between HR and the, the laws, and we looked at popular questions, popular questions in that section. In your quality of performance section, we mainly focused on important terms, We focused on the benefits of a good TQM system. And then finally also, we looked at quality 
indicators, which is basically what each of the business functions should do to qualify. Well, that's all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for listening and I hope to see you next time.